that the electric's still on. It's 8.59. But apparently we have another power cut today, like nine till five. So we're gonna go out. All the doors are finished. Well, that one's not on yet, but it's like lacquered and whatever. So they're all done 99%. So all that's left to do really is to give this room another coat of paint. So I'll go and buy some of that today. I'm out of paint. The bathroom's done 100%. Uh, I just turned the lights on to show you, but the power's off now. Yeah, this is all finished and the shower works absolutely fine. No problems. It's a nice wide shower, this one. It's a metre wide, so it's, it's nicer. This is the smaller bathroom, but I prefer it. Right, well, that's that. The power is off. Just getting all my bits together, then we'll jump in the car. Yeah, can't go anywhere without my bits. Where's my wallet? In the car. What you been doing with it? Spend it. No. I really don't have a lot left to do with the DIY. So I like, finished painting that bedroom. I would like to paint the columns here on the outside. They've been primed, filled and sanded, but I just haven't given them the top coat yet. Or is it okay to leave that? If I leave that another six months, is that okay? Or does it, does that final coat help protect it? I don't know. There, there goes Puck with Shabu. Have Bung Bung growling. This lady here like takes the cardboard. I don't know what they do with it. You know, I think it's like they recycle it. <coughs> what are you barking at? <coughs> what? <coughs> There's nothing, nothing there. <coughs> Where they live there? They live there. We don't live here, so. You bark at your own house, isn't it? Like he's barking at them, lot like down there. So that's more or less the last of our cardboard from like all the building and the DIY. And whatever. it feels good to get rid of that. Am I supposed to go? Where well, everyone else is going? What are they up to? What is this, a wedding or something? Well, what do the monks want with that elephant then? What is it, like a blessing or something? I see. So the monks didn't pay for it? The food they gave to the monk, like a food cup they gave to the monk. And then happy to the hair sun to the monk. Right. I don't quite understand. Yeah, I don't know. Something to do with the monks. There's an elephant there. I don't know. All right, we found the place we're going to. It's some like new cafe up the mountain here. So we've got to go up this like little mountain road up there somewhere. There's a sign here that says to phone them up first because if there's someone on the way down, there's no passing places. It's a single track road. So Penn's just checking. Oh, yeah. Big lizard sitting there, like Bung Bung's right. looking at it. Too small. Okay, it's not that big, but it's still. And the sign also says you have to have four wheel drive to get up here. Hopefully, it's not too freaky. I'll put the four wheel drive on. Well, this bit looks all right anyway. Bumpy, but you know. 
we've come to the melon farm instead we went up the like mountain road thing we got almost to the top most of it was all right and then they had like on the really steep sections they'd made like a concrete road and i guess because of all the rain or whatever recently well it's always raining but it had washed a lot of sand and stones like onto the road and it just made it very slippery and and i thought it just didn't feel safe at all so when i found a spot i could turn around at i did so So the only difference from the last times we've been here is they've got this outside bit where they do noodles now. Penn's been wanting to come and try this for a while. Is it any good? Average or good, you know? But I think it's too hot for noodles. Like Soup makes me hot for some reason. So. Hot Lots of fruit on all the trees around here. So this is what I'm gonna have for breakfast. I've got like a Pagga Prowl, but it doesn't look like with mints and just two eggs. Anyway, mountain road number two. I hope this is the right turn in. It's around here somewhere. Yeah, I recognise it now. It's here on the left. So we visited this farm last year as well. Do you guys remember this place? They got the Rambutan here and then the Durian up on the mountain. They came to visit us yesterday. And then we're come to visit them today because they've got fruit. I think up on the mountain now for the first time, so we're going to have a look. Well, that's where we're going to, those trees up on the hill there. Right, we got up the mountain, all right. This road's not too bad. It's a bit tight though. It's designed for his Suzuki. Getting that Hilux round it was a bit difficult. A bit thin. Um, I was hoping to be able to walk Bung Bung and Gorgie up here, but unfortunately, there's eight dogs here. They just had loads of puppies, so. We'll leave the dogs in the car, but it's their sort of sleep time anyway, so they'll be all right for now. It's a really nice view over there. It's a bit cloudy, so you can't see it properly. I'll put a link to the old video from last year where you can see the view properly, if you're interested. It's got a pretty thick trunk compared to its height. And I think these are just over three years old. So they've started to have a bit of fruit for the first time. It looks like most of them don't have any, but yeah, that one's got Quite a lot for some reason. There's plenty. But yeah, there's a it's a pretty big view off down that way if it wasn't so cloudy. But these clouds have been helping us out today with the temperatures. It's a bit cooler than it would be otherwise. So what P Deng is telling us is that this year they didn't try to have any fruit, they didn't do anything. They've just been carrying on as normal and left it all natural and some of the trees have started to have fruit on their own. But next year, they'll try properly to like induce fruiting. So if everything goes according to plan, they should have like a lot of fruit here next year. So these trees are a little bit older than ours, but ours will be roughly this stage, this time next year. So we probably will try to induce a bit of fruiting next year. I got the top again so you can see the view. It's pretty steep up here, it sort of makes your leg muscles burn, you know, trying to get up here. It never shows on the camera the steepness, but it's, uh... <laughs> it's pretty steep. So you can 
see I'm a long way above them already. Much like the farm we went to in the last video. <laughs> Uh, they'll never have a flooding problem up here but it's hard to work it it's just it's, it's very hard work walking up here so imagine coming up here to well to do the watering it's got to come up here turn the taps on and off but there he is down there he's got his little like backpack sprayer uh, perhaps up here he really would benefit from having like a, a a fixed spraying system like me and Penn just put in but <laughs> walking up and down that with with something on your back and a mask and it's very it'd be very hard work no doubt about it anyway let's get up the top because well yeah this is a top corner And see over there, I mean, does that, does that kind of show the steepness? I'd say that's 45 degrees up there, same as this. That's the view, it's pretty good, isn't it? Goes a long way. And like I mentioned in the last video, that lake down there is about two kilometers away and that's where they get their water from, from this farm. And, and they have to pump it up the mountain in two separate stages. So they, I think they probably, I haven't seen the setup, but I imagine they pump it to like a holding tank halfway and then pump it again, like the rest of the way. But one thing I will say for sure is that their trees here look healthier than our trees, like 100%. Looking around, there, there's, I can't see any disease. They just look full, healthy, big green leaves. Let's zoom in on that one over there. Full, big leads with no disease on yesterday when they came to visit us he was saying something about our trees oh look you got a bit of disease here and there and what peace on pond was saying was you know you want to be going around spraying vitamins on them which is the same thing that Penn's uncle said you want to start spraying vitamins on these which is one reason why we got that spraying system so we can start doing that. Because in order to have fruit, you need healthy trees. That's like, you know, step one is healthy trees. And ours are not too bad, but they're not as nice as this. You can, I can see that clearly. The body cup. Okay. You're joking. The one at the bottom's bigger. That's unbelievable. So, this is one of the pumps that pumps the water up from the lake, and that's massive. That's just a Isuzu four cylinder, so that's just out of a car to drive that pump. And there's another pump down at the lake that's bigger than this, apparently. So, this is like the second pump for the rest of it. That's uh, impressive. And then unlike the normal like PVC, you can see it's all like fixed metal piping coming out of this because the pressure, I guess, is just very strong. So you've got to have metal pipe at first and then it will, I think underground there, it transfers into the PVC pipe. But yeah, without a doubt, their trees look nicer, greener, healthier generally better than ours do it's got to be said peace on pun's gonna like phone the vitamin guy he uses he's gonna come and visit us on monday and maybe have a look at our trees and see what like product he's got to recommend right so something i misunderstood there was that they're not going to try and induce the fruit in next year they're going to try and do it this year i thought maybe it's a bit too late in the season but they're saying no so at the moment they're spraying to make the trees healthy and then they're going to give them like another spray which will like cause them to flower and then so they're going to try and have a crop this year right down the mountain we go lucky we got the hilux
just having a look at some of their small trees as well. Got a few around here. Whenever I come to other people's farms, I always pay very close attention to how they're pruning their trees. I think I'm doing it pretty much the same as this here, which I think is correct. Like there's different ways of doing it. You know, cut more or, or leave a bit more. But I think cut more is better. I think you cut more, the tree has less places to direct its energy so the branches thicken up faster. And as I've mentioned before, you get more sunlight penetration, less diseased, that's what I think. Yeah, it's shady, but it is nice. It's kind of like being in a, I don't know, it like reminds me of a park in England, just sort of shady trees and nice grass. Got some long gone as well. They were just telling us that whoever owns that up there is planting durian up there as well. And I mean, that is even steeper than where we've just been. It looks like from here, it looks like 60 degrees. It looks crazy. Like you can see all the, the, the channels they've had to cut in it. So you, you, you go up it like that because you, it's, it's too steep to go up like that. So that's going to be a lot of hard work. Yeah, I think I prefer where we are to that one maybe. So this chap is their son. He lives here as well. That's his house in there. So he can live and work in here, you know, all together as a family kind of thing. So, you know, that's something you can do in Thailand that you just can't do in England or a lot of Western countries. You know, you, oh, you want your son to come and live here. You can build a little house, no problem. No one tells you what to do. You can just kind of live your own life and mind your own business. Um, you know, you did this in it. Well, even if you had the money to afford space like this in England, you just come and put up a house. Someone will come and tell you that's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. And they'll take you to court and then eventually they'll come and bulldoze it, won't they? They just don't leave you alone. I'm just saying that's one of the good parts of Thailand is you've got a bit of space. You can have whoever live here together. There's enough, you know, you're not living on top of each other. I don't know. Uh, surely that's better. You know, because you can like, uh, it's a big subject, but you know, you can work together like intergenerationally and then it goes to the kids and then it goes to the grandkids. And I feel uh, I'm going to go off like all political. But I feel like in England, it's almost designed to split families up like that. Like properties are so small, it's very difficult to live with other generations these days. And they always encourage you to fly the nest and go to university, get some stupid degree and then some silly job, go to a city and live in an apartment. I, I think it's all just to split everyone up and turn everyone into like an individual economic consumer of everything from, you know, well, to sum it up, I suppose you could say it's the complete opposite of this. And I think this is better long term for families. It's just my opinion. Right, off we go. So they've got all that rambutan back there, but apparently this year, because of all the rain, they didn't get any fruit. So normally they would have maybe 300,000 baht from the rambutan, but this year, nothing. So perhaps that's why they're going to try and get some durian from the top. Where are we going now? Where does that elephant come from then? Does it live around here or what? They can't transport it, can they? You can't, it's not like you can put it on the back of a lorry and, and ship it in from somewhere else. Oh, you drink the water. Matcha coconut. Yeah. I've not had that before. We're just having a bit of a pit stop. We took the dogs for a walk around the car park a bit, but it's so hot out there now. 
all like the tarmacs, like red hot, and all the heat radiates back at you. They've had a bit of cold water, but they're they're both far too hot. So you find trying to hide from the heat back there. We were all glad to get back in the car, back in the aircon. So we're up in the army barracks again. I came up here the other day actually, they were doing all their like army exercises in here. Crawling along the floor in the in the heat, you know, in like the midday sun and I didn't envy them for that. Well, we'll pop in here for a little bit. Both the dogs are totally passed out, ready for a sleep. We'll park here under one of these trees. We don't have it out too far. I guess that's about 10 yards or so. So we're still renting their gun here because well pen's ordered one but it's just it's taking a bit of time so we're just borrowing theirs again but we've got like a little laser like we're going to try and use this the settings on there to adjust it see if we can get it centered right so get the laser on the center and then without moving it pull the trigger and uh, see where the bullet goes Do one more so we test it, see how close it is. Can't, don't wiggle around like that, put it in the middle and keep it still. So it looks like our rounds are going slightly low and slightly left, so... Got this little Allen key and then there's a... Adjustment there for like U for up. Just turn that a little bit. We'll give it, I don't know, what's, what should we do? Quarter a turn. So yeah, we've been fiddling with it, trying to get it zeroed. I think it's almost there. It's just hitting there slightly low still, but... Um, I thought it might be a good training aid, but I don't know if it ends up being a crutch and... You know, what if the batteries run out and that sort of thing. I'm not sure about that laser thing yet. I guess you just get good with whatever you practice with. But generally speaking, I find shooting to be more difficult than you imagine it will be. Even trying to be accurate on a target that's only like 10 metres away. You think it would be easy to hit the bullseye, but I, I find that it isn't. You know, like when you squeeze the trigger, you end up pulling it a little bit. And I found that the laser didn't help with that. You know, you still you line the laser up with the middle, but you still end up pulling it slightly and well me and Penn both sort of suffer from that. I suppose only practice will cure it. Just get in the paint pot. I don't need a lot more, just a little bit. So they're out of the colour they need to like mix up the right one. That's a bit annoying. They're saying go to Home Pro but the last time I was in Home Pro, they were out of stock of something they needed as well. For the, that's why I came here actually. So here in Global House, they have quite a good selection of little like lock boxes. So I'm going to buy one of these little boxes. Take that home with me. So yeah, they have stock. Good. Right, that's that done. It was about two thousand baht that thing. Oh no, Pen, look. There's this naughty dog. Look at it, and it keeps coming, and it sort of drives our dogs wild. The dog that wheezes on everything, that dog died recently, like, not long ago, only a few days ago. And now it's like, the next day, there's this other dog. It's, it's in, it's in our shed, like, weighing on everything. And this one, it comes in the night time as well. It makes our dog like really go wild. So they're building up the road here a little bit so we can get in and out without having to drive through all the mud. And they've taken some mud from down the bottom there, like just, 
just over the brow dips down a bit in there, using that to build that up. And then also adding in a little bit of sand. Bung bung, what do you think you're doing? Bung bung, come out of there, come on. Anyway, we've been trapped in the car all day, so. Let him run free. Uh oh, the other dog's there. Bung bung, Pen is there, look. Wants trouble. Wait till it sees it, you watch. Got Shabu there, Bung Bung there, other dog there, trouble brewing. Right, so Penn's not letting Goggy go because apparently what happens is, like, if Bung Bung's on his own, he won't be quite so aggressive. But if he knows Gorgie's there to back him up, he'll go, like, more bitey, if you know what I mean. Anyway, hopefully they'll get along and be friends. I mean, that's what we want, ideally, isn't it? Not too much fighting. This dog that's coming in, it doesn't seem to want to fight or anything. Right, good boy, Bung Bung, come on, this way. Electric's back on, just before six o'clock. All right, so this is the lock box I bought up at Global House. I just got one of the smaller ones, one of the slightly cheaper ones. It's got some holes in the bottom and comes with some bolts, so I'm gonna bolt it to the floor somewhere. And I also chose one, they had, three different key styles to choose from. I chose this one because it's, it's one I can copy easily, so make a few spares. For not too much money, you can get like a bigger, stronger, fireproof one, but I just thought, well, we don't really have any valuables, to be honest, so maybe not worth it. And what this is for is when Penn's Glock finally shows up, sooner or later, She'll have somewhere to lock it, like when she's out. Visitors come over, like maybe she'll have a dog sitter. It might be like a teenager or something. And obviously anything dangerous, I think, you know, you need to be like responsible and lock it up. In some countries, in some countries they do that, don't they? They make it like the law, like part of the license requirement is you have to have a safe to like lock all the stuff up in and I don't know if it's the law to do this or not in Thailand, but I just think it's like obvious you should do it, I think. There was a case on the news recently, wasn't there, where some kids got hold of someone's shotgun like somewhere here in Thailand and like one of them shot the other one or something. So, you know, you don't want to have things like that lying around. I think they're hungry. They're hot, they're hot. Right, too hot. Yeah. We got that chicken from the rotisserie. And the salad with the little crispy fish. I reckon Bung Bung wants a crispy fish. Bung Bung. No, but Penny's trying to give him a biscuit. Here, Bung Bung, crispy fish, look. Oh, which is his favorite, see? There you go. Salmon fish. That's coffee and a nice bit of durian there as well. Pen got one delivered from a friend on Koh Samui. A friend's got a farm over there. Sent a nice big one over to us. <laughs> That's pretty big, that bit. Yeah, it was really good, that bit of durian. It's kind of like avocado. Like, you know, like it's flavor and softness, like peaks, like right before it goes bad. Durian's kind of like that. And that one's like, it was, it's right on the turn. So that pizza's like pretty much perfect. Like tomorrow it would have been no good, but it was like really good. Big orange cat is here. He's howling for the other one to come out and play. So that was all right today, going up to that farm. Good to see their trees are still doing pretty well. And they're gonna come here on Monday, like with the vitamin guy, to like have a look at our trees and, and, and help us basically. 
So the people that own that farm, P. Sompon and his wife, P. Deng, we don't like know them really well for a long time or anything. If you remember that, they're called P. Chi. P. Deng is her sister and P. Sompon, therefore her uh, brother-in-law. Um, so we just kind of know them through P. Chi, really. But it's nice of them, you know, they're, they're, they're going to come here and help us out just just to be nice, really. So, you know, not after anything in return, just um, you know, they're able to help. So they're happy to help. So hopefully come Monday, we'll get some, you know, more eyes on our trees, people that know better than us what to do and they'll help us get ready for next year. Okay, it's up there now. Come on, quick, 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 quick. The other cat's here, come on. Hurry up, keep your guests waiting. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll be back to the DIY tomorrow. Really not much left to do. Tiny bit of painting and a little bit of plumbing here and there. Well, I'm pretty sure this time next week I could well be back in England going back to work. So this will be one of the last videos over here in Thailand at least.